I welcome everyone to the second episode on Maria Valtorta's revelations. Lent is coming up. Because it is coming up, I wanted to share a powerful parable from Jesus that speaks to the conversion and the transformation that the Lord seeks from us, that we are called to, especially in a transformative season like Lent, when we are called to give up more and see the grace work in us interiorly. So it's a parable from the final volume of the uh, poem of the man god it is present on chapter 552 552 let's uh let's begin uh beginning where you see the red ink the red underline one bound and you are in the peaceful flowery island of spirituality but one must have the courage to make a leap leaving the shore, the world. It is necessary to jump without worrying whether there is someone who may laugh at our clumsy jump or may deride us for our simplicity in preferring a lonely isolate to the world. One must jump without being afraid of getting hurt or wet or being disappointed. You must leave everything to take refuge in God. One must remain on the island, separated from the world, and leave it only to distribute the flowers and pure water picked up on the island of the spirits, where there is only one tree, the tree of wisdom, to those who are left on the shores. By being close to that tree, away from the noise of the world, one catches all its words and becomes a master, being aware of being a disciple. Also, that is a symbol. Okay, powerful uh, words from Jesus to his disciples. Powerful symbol of this island of spirituality. And it's interesting because often in Christian spirituality, we receive a lot of symbols the desert, the island, the mountain, right? Lent at times is uh, portrayed in the imagery of the desert. Jesus fasting in the desert for 40 days. Uh, the, the Israelites walking in the desert for 40 years, right? And even the word quarantine, which recently we've associated with isolation during pandemic, the word quarantine comes from a Latin word that means 40, because it literally is a reference to being in solitude for 40 days. So the image here is of an island instead of desert, but it can be used in a similar way. The island of spirituality, perhaps a more captivating image. And notice a few central points. First point that I wanted to emphasize from this parable. You must have the courage to make a leap, leaving the shore, which is the world. So Jesus stresses that people may laugh at you, they may deride you, the fact that, that you uh, prefer a simple island over the world. But the point here is you are called to something greater. You are called to a life that is so fully concentrated on God, so dedicated to Him, that you're leaving the distractions of the secular world. It's a courageous call to sacrifice the secular for God totally, a totality with the Lord, all or nothing, God or mammon, fully to say yes to God. Now, what's next? There's a few essential points here. You must leave everything to take refuge in God. That is a powerful proclamation to leave everything, right? It reminds you of those, the rich young man. You know, Jesus says, if you seek perfection, go, give all your possessions, give to the poor, and come and follow me. 
but the young man walked away sad from Jesus because he had too many possessions and he was not willing to give them up. The materialism enslaved him from spiritual freedom, from true liberation, from eternal life with Christ in a more perfect way, a more perfect path. You must leave everything to see God on this island of spirituality. So ask yourself during this Lent, what are my distractions? When you're asking this question, you're also asking, what are my false idols? One of the points here in the parable, it also emphasized as you're staying on the island, you are away from the noise of the world. What is the noise of the world in your life? Where am I being kept away? What are the false tabernacles that I spend too much time in front of? You know, we worship that which we spend most of our time in front of. For many people, the false tabernacle, it looks like this, right? It's the, this thing, the, the smartphone or the iPhone, whichever you have. So many people glued to it for hours every day. Time that could be given over to prayer, time that can be given over to scripture, time that can be given over to Our Lady's Rosary, interceding for the world, interceding for those who are on the verge of hell, for great sinners, interceding for peace in the world, interceding for the souls in purgatory, for their purification. So many graces wasted each day because of the idols that keep us glued to staring at shadows, to invoke Plato's great allegory of the cave. Leave the matrix. Leave the world. Come unto the island where there is the tree of wisdom. The only tree present on this island is the tree of wisdom. And notice what Jesus says. He says that when you come to the islands and you spend your time with the tree of wisdom, away from the noise of the world, you eventually become a master, knowing that you are a disciple. So this leads to transformation, to spiritual transformation. When you spend all your time or most of your you know, free time, spare time with prayer, with meditation, with reading the scriptures, with reading the mystics like Maria Valtorza, reading about the life of Jesus, that affects your mind, that affects your soul, that affects your hearts. The eye gate, what are you letting enter into your eyes, into your eye gate, into your field of vision, right? The gospel says, the gospel says, if your eye is in the light, then your whole body will be in the light. But if it is not, then you will be affected thrown into darkness to to keep your eye pure keep your eyes pure my challenge is this lens spend it on the island of spirituality and that means get rid of the secular get rid of the secular idols in your life there are so many secular idols, things that we become preoccupied with, obsessed with. They manipulate our emotions. They take our time away from God. Whether it's an obsession with politics, sports, entertainment, materialism, self-image, social media, an expression of the self that is being presented to the world with its various masks, whatever it is. It can become a golden calf that keeps you from a deeper, more intimate communion with God, with your creator, with Jesus, with Mother Mary as your great spiritual mother and intercessor. Notice also this point from the parable. One must remain on the island, separated from the world, and leave it only. There's an italics here in the text, only to distribute the flowers and pure water picked up on the island of the spirits to distribute it to those who are left on the shore in the world. 
And that's, that's an interesting one, right? Because it means that when I have free time, that free time should be dedicated to some type of Christian expression, some kind of growth in the spiritual life or in the intellectual life if I'm reading scripture. And that, of course, should eventually affect my spiritual life. And I am only to leave the island when I am going to distribute the the fruits of the islands right so my prayer my should affect me should affect my soul what i read sacred texts whether scripture or the writings of the mystics or saints or great spiritual writers should affect my mind and i should have a desire to spread these things to family members to co-workers to those that i converse with you know i know friends who are so anointed. I have friendships with people who are so filled with the Spirit of God that when they speak, Scripture just comes out of them. When they speak, you feel edified, transformed. You feel like you are in the presence of somebody who just uplifted you and filled your spirit with grace through the power of the words. Because with words, we can create realities, right? The Lord spoke and it came into being. He's giving us an example there. He says that your speech can affect grace, right? If speech can affect sin, if sin can come into the world because of blasphemy or lying or, or gossip or whatever it is, the inversion is also a reality. And it's an inversion we do not speak about, no pun intended enough it's the fact that our words can also affect grace a person can if you are filled with a deep communion with god because of your closeness to the tree of wisdom that is on the island of spirituality a person can receive grace through the power of anointed speech anointed speech means that your speech is touched by the spirit of god by the anointing of the holy spirit you know a person can say to someone i love you and those words can go in one ear and out the other or god loves you one ear and out the other but if a person's speech is anointed by the spirit of god because of their deep communion with god then they can say god loves you and those words have a piercing effect and they can lead the person to start tearing up and really have a transformative effect a grace-filled effect so there's a lot of power that transpires when you actually spend time on the island of spirituality away from the world now he now here's the thing yes there's transformation and there's conversion through the fruits that you can bring to others even if you're just planting seeds sometimes we don't see the instantaneous conversion but planting seeds when people see you they see that you've become a spiritually mature person that scripture comes out of you that you're happier that you have a greater interior peace which comes from spending time on the island of spirituality it affects their lives it gives them food for thoughts now the question may, may be asked therefore what should my lent look like am i to stay away from all movies and shows and just spend all my time in my room praying not exactly what i would emphasize is yes prayer comes first that you have the primary role right M make a space in your room where you create an altar have a table or a desk where there is a crucifix, a Bible, perhaps a Marian image or statue of Our Lady, and spend time there, at least an hour a day, at least. Could, could, could you not watch with me for at least an hour, the Lord said to his disciples in Gethsemane. But if you need a break, if you need to watch a show or a movie, you know, make sure it's explicitly Christian sacrifice the secular for lent you know watch an episode of the chosen or watch a great marian film like the 2020 film fatima or watch uh the passion of the christ but make it explicitly christian for 40 days allow it to still be spiritually edifying 
allow it to still feed your soul through those images once again the eye gate what do you let into your eyes and therefore into your mind and into your soul it's going to affect you emotionally and spiritually so make sure that it is something that remains sacred spiritually edifying and has a positive transformative effect interiorly that eventually will affect others as you go out and speak to others and of course uh, with that it's also important to have a balance not to you know justify a day by saying oh i i watched christian movies all day while you binge watch right binge watching is something that also becomes a type of addiction which uh, leads to idolatry because the idolatry of the fluorescent screen the false tabernacle that a person can spend too much time in front of while neglecting prayer while neglecting holy reading while neglecting holy conversations so to have a balance yes explicitly christian shows and movies for lent spend this time in the island of spirituality but do not allow a type of subtle rationalization justification of watching too much and think to yourself i'm doing such christian things no primary responsibility will be the spiritual life will be prayer will be sacred reading will be holy conversations and occasionally a film a show that is explicitly christian if you watch youtube as you are doing obviously um, make sure that the youtube shows are explicitly christian music videos explicitly christian this is my invitation for this lent kill the se the secular choose god over mammon and you will see in 40 days there's an immense transformation there really is you start speaking differently you start looking differently there's a greater peace in you conversations become more naturally spiritual around other people because you just can't hold it back have you ever uh, had those friends where they just so easily uh, lead you into spiritual conversations whenever you're with them well, guess what? There's no method. It's not a human methodology. It's just people who are so in love with God that it emanates from them because they spend so much time with God and the things of God on the island of spirituality and they're actually feeding you with the foods from the islands. Now it's an opportunity to become that person as you're working on your conversion and a deepened intimacy with Jesus during lunch. God bless you.